I'm sure you've seen this report and perhaps for you it contains no surprises because you used to work on the front line in this situation. Does it look any different now to when you were there? Uh, the the report was actually very good. I think Mark's done a, a cracking job. I think what's particularly interesting is that the boats were going off in daylight. Um, when other broadcasters have been over to France and done it, it's always been at night. And that, to me, means that the smugglers are, are getting more brazen because, uh, you know, nobody's stopping them. <clears throat> Can't they, really, Kevin? That's, that's what you've identified. There's no sense of fear of being caught or that any sort of justice being brought to bear. The numbers are eye-watering. I mean, Mark was just saying then, the number of people on that one dinghy that we just saw going across then, he said that alone would have netted about £250,000 for the people smugglers, and they are making millions of pounds a day. It feels like that is a revenue stream, which could be, surely, there must be a way of stopping it, whether it's getting banks involved, identifying individuals. I, it just feels like there must be a way of intercepting those large amounts of money. Well, the intelligence people are targeting um, some of these uh, criminals and they are having some success. The trouble is there are so many people involved in it that um, it's, it's a bit like the little boy trying to put his finger in the dike. As Mark actually said, they stopped, the French police stopped one boat and um, a couple of hundred yards down the uh, coast, another boat is, is in the water. If you want to stop the, 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 the smugglers, um, you, you have got to return them to France straight away. He is quite right on that. But the only way to do that is to convince the French to deploy the Gendarmerie Maritime onto the channel to work with Border Force and the Navy to actually stop the boats um, in the Channel and return them to France. It is difficult. The French don't want to play ball at the moment, um, but that would stop it. And, of course, um, Mark was also saying that uh, the, the, what would break it would be that if the people knew that they weren't going to be allowed to stay in the UK, which is, of course, what the Rwanda idea was to remove the people from the UK to Rwanda so that they've paid all that money, they've come across the channel, but they've got nothing out of it. So there are some ideas on, on, the, on the table at the moment. Um, we'll just have to wait and see whether our new prime minister is going to be able to do anything about it. Yeah. Uh, our, one of our presenters here, Alistair Stewart, will be speaking to the two Tory leadership hopefuls, Liz Trust and um, Rishi Sunak, tomorrow at 7pm. And he says one thing he wants to focus on is the immigration question. What's the question you would ask those two who are now, of course, going to be our prime minister? One of them is what question would you ask them in terms of how they're going to deal with this issue? Well, what I would ask them both to do, whoever gets the job, is to immediately have a meeting with President Mitterrand and try and work out how they're going to do it. Let's be honest, we know the French are going to want something in return, so you've got to negotiate with them. Uh, find out what the French want to stop the boats coming across. Yeah, I'm guessing it's going to cost us a little bit more taxpayers' money, um, Kevin. I think I don't we'll think, probably all agree on that. I don't think it's sorry. I don't think it's just taxpayers' money. The French want a deal on fishing. They want a deal on Northern Ireland. So whoever is going to be in charge has got to be prepared to negotiate.